Hey everyone, and welcome to another light novel review. Today I'm going to be looking at Spy Classroom, a quirky look at the world of espionage education against a fictional European-like backdrop after a great war. I'm going to try something new for this review and have a quick synopsis and general outline of the novel in an elevator pitch-like format, and then a more in-depth description following it. I'm doing this because I'm not sure if all of you are watching these reviews all the way through, so at least this will give a good idea of what to expect, so here's Spy Classroom the elevator pitch. In the world of spies, intelligence and a proper education are everything. When Klaus, the self-professed greatest spy in the world, is tasked with an impossible mission, he forms a team of washouts to complete the task. Armed with no practical experience and fatal flaws, he tasks each teammate with trying to kill him before the date of their impossible mission. The world of Spy Classroom is a bit of an odd one. It feels quite grim and bland, but its characters are quite colourful and eccentric. Think of it like Assassination Classroom, but it leans heavier on espionage and their teacher, while being an amazing spy, is horrible at actually teaching a single lesson, often using strange terms to define his actions or flat out telling them just to do it. The classmates collectively named Lamplight all take issue with Klaus's teaching method, compounded with a ticking clock to their eventual mission and seemingly inevitable deaths. Klaus decides in a roundabout way that the best way to get practical experience is with practice itself, as he can't explain anything properly, but at least understands that that is his fault. So he leaves it to Lamplight to work together and try to take him down as he is confident his abilities far exceed theirs, and this will be all the training they need. This is a slight spoiler for the novel, but thematically important. The further I got into this novel, the clearer it was that translating it in a way that made sense would have been a massive undertaking. Originally what I thought was lazy writing or burying key information in mundane dialogue turned out to fit into a grander whole. Every little tidbit is important in some way, and it actually made me want to reread it after finishing just to weed out all the little stuff I missed. However, there are a few things that I found as actual issues and not intentional breadcrumbs. The nondescript setting is fine enough, but I felt like at least an explanation of where the world's technology was at would have been good, like do they have smartphones, are listening devices a thing, stuff like that. While you do learn everyone's name eventually, for a good portion of the novel I imagined everyone would be referred to by their code names in the beginning colour illustrations, which they aren't, and I found that a bit annoying as I would constantly flick back to the front when they'd talk about a specific character like the girl with pink hair or the girl with red hair. At least giving their code names some use would have been nice as they aren't really referenced at all, and I feel like that was a little awkward. Otherwise it's solid. There are some clever and entertaining attempts to take down Klaus, and his simple and sudden escapes or counterattacks that even the narrator can't seem to keep up with were interesting. The climax to this novel had a frenetic pace, and I really didn't want to put the book down once it got going. There's a lot that can be done from here, and the fairly contained narrative has me on board for future installments. The illustrations are quite good, they're the type to punctuate sequences rather than introduce characters except in a few key spots like when Klaus is first introduced to Lamplight, and how he looks to have finished up some horrible deed but doesn't act the least bit disturbed by it. There aren't a whole lot of them, but I feel like they are woven into the narrative a lot more deliberately than most other novels, which gives them a lot more value than an image every chapter or so for the sake of it. Here everything has a purpose and I quite like that. Overall, Spy Classroom was a pleasant surprise. I've been on a bit of a mission lately to read a hundred books in a year, and because of that I'm not particularly picky about what it is that I read, which is why I read a lot of books without looking at the blurb or synopsis online to know what genre I'm getting into, and so far it's working out pretty well. Sure there are a few misses, but there are a lot more hits that I hope to share with all of you, and Spy Classroom is one of those hits. It's unexpected, it's fun, it's crazy, and I enjoyed every minute of it. So if anything I just said about Spy Classroom appealed to you, then I strongly recommend giving it a go. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you all next time.